Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to Triple Double Nation. Today I'll be covering Stephen Curry is done with the Golden State Warriors. Let's get into the video. The Golden State Warriors suffered one of the most humiliating losses in franchise history during a 53-point defeat at the hands of the Toronto Raptors, a team that came into the game having lost 13 of its past 14 games. You saw it. Warriors coach Steve Kerr said after the 130-77 loss, we just got destroyed. Not a whole lot to be said. Humiliating for everybody involved. The Warriors, who trailed by as many as 61 points in the second half, set some dubious marks in a game which both Stephen Curry and Draymond Green set out. The Raptors outscored the Warriors by 51 points in the second and third quarters. The largest point differential over a two-quarter span within a game in NBA history. According to Elias Sports Bureau research, the Warriors became the fourth team in the past 25 seasons to trail by at least 60 points in a game. According to ESPN Stats and Information Research, the Raptors' 53-point margin of victory is also tied for the third largest in league history by a team that is 10 or more games below .500. I just think the game went south on us quickly when we got demoralized, Kerr said. I think without Steph and Draymond out there, I think we were a little bit rudderless when things went south. We didn't have the internal fight that we needed to kind of get over the hump. That was evident in a variety of different areas. But offensively, the stat might be the most jarring for the Warriors is the fact that they become the only team in the past 25 years to lose a game by at least 50 points and not score a fast break point. They had only one fast break attempt the whole game and missed it. It's a huge reason Kerr was so frustrated with this team's lack of ball movement. Our team has been built on sharing the ball, Kerr said. When you move the ball in this game, that's when the magic happens. When you build an energy, a karma. The shots tend to go in if you move the ball and share it. And I just saw one possession after another tonight that was one pass and a shot. We've got to play for each other, and I didn't think we did that tonight. Last week, veteran Kevin Looney acknowledged that Curry and Green shared messages for their teammates about looking within and trying to play better. After Friday's embarrassing performance, veteran Kent Bazemore said injured former All-Star Klay Thompson shared some thoughts with several teammates after the game. It's a hard pill for them to swallow, Bazemore said of the Warriors missing three core players. We're talking about, and Klay is back there as well, these guys have five straight finals appearances. This is by any means not acceptable by them at all. This hurts them more than anything. Clay was fired up after the game, and this has been the toughest two years watching these guys out there, and him not being able to help. So I think it's lit a fire up under him, and Steph and Draymond, they know how important they are to us. For Thompson, the loss was even tougher to watch given that he is currently rehabbing an Achilles injury that has forced him to miss his second straight season. Bazemore said Thompson's message for a few teammates was simple on its point. He was just kind of going off about how he missed the game and how it was just not acceptable to lose this way, Bazemore said. He's fired up, man. It's hard watching regardless if you're playing or not playing. The good news for the Warriors is that Curry is expected to be back Sunday against the Atlanta Hawks. Green's status remains unclear given that he was initially expected to play on Friday, but after trying to warm up, he told the coaching staff that he couldn't catch the ball with his left hand because of a finger injury. Green told Curry could play, but the veteran coach made the decision for Green to sit. As the Warriors wait for their stars to heal, they've got a looming issue with the young center they were hoping would help them this season. Big man James Wiseman, 20, had another rough night against the Raptors, struggling on both ends of the floor, which has been an ongoing theme since the All-Star break. Curry said the Warriors want to simplify parts of the game plan for Wiseman so that he can build his confidence back up. As a young player, a lot of guys try to do that too much, Kerr said. I think that's what's happening with James right now. I think he's such a gifted guy, and he's always been able to do whatever he wanted to on the floor. But the NBA, the game happens so fast that you just have to sort of strip it down to let's be good at the things that I can be good at right now, and then my game will expand as we go forward. And that's what we're trying to share with James and teach him. But the only way to learn that is to feel it, and he's feeling it. So he will grow from here and we'll stay positive with him. We'll try to peel things back and keep things really simple and help him build his confidence over the last quarter of the season. As the Warriors hope to see more development down the stretch from the number two overall pick in the 2020 draft, they do so with the group that hit the low point of its season Friday night. Kerr is hopeful his team will bounce back after two straight defeats, but he also understands that each individual player has to find his own motivation to get things back on track before it's too late. 
As a coach, you try to navigate the season with your team as best you can, Kerr said. So there's times for humor, there's times for joy, there's times for serious discussion and soul searching. This is a time for soul searching for sure. The Golden State Warriors are in the middle of a free fall. After looking like one of the surprisingly competitive teams through the first few months, their record reaching a season best 19-15 on February 26, they've now lost 12 of their last 16, including 7 of their last 8 after a 117-111 defeat at the hands of the Atlanta Hawks. Stephen Curry, who's playing in clear discomfort trying to keep the Warriors afloat, is feeling more and more helpless. He didn't play on Friday against the Raptors and the Warriors lost by 53 points the most lopsided beating any team has suffered this season. He came back to pour in 37 points on Monday against an Atlanta team, playing without two of its three best players, John Collins and DeAndre Hunter, and it still wasn't enough. Curry isn't one to show frustration. He can miss 10 straight shots and the look on his face won't change. He's already had one notable airing of frustration on the sideline this season, and to hear him talk like this certainly strikes an urgent chord. Curry's a free agent next summer. He's eligible to sign an extension this summer. Nobody really thinks he's going anywhere, but there's no way to ignore the possibility as it pertains to the franchise's responsibility to maximize what's left of his prime. At the moment, they don't appear to be clear on how to do that, and to me, that's becoming the biggest issue. This blurring line between the present and future, the Warriors are trying to have it both ways. They want to win now, but not enough for Steve Kerr to stretch Curry's minutes. They want to develop James Wiseman for the future, but not enough to play him a single second in the fourth quarter. Both short and longer term strategies can be justified, but it's becoming increasingly clear the Warriors need to pick one and fully commit to it. If they want to make the playoffs rather than waste another season at Curry's prime, fine, go for it. Kerr had a dead ball opportunity to reinsert Curry with 7.27 to play the court in the fourth quarter on Monday. At the time, the Warriors were up by one. He kept him out for another minute, and in that time, the Warriors lost 6 points, the exact margin by which they lost the game. This brings us to the end of our video. I hope you enjoyed it. Hit like if you did, and don't forget to subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on any of our videos in the future.